So we're recording this one in the pre-market for our breakdown and prediction. So I could do this one in the morning here because uh, I didn't get to do one last night, but it's okay. I want to go through the plays that we had called before we left anyway. So now before I left my team here yesterday, um, we had a pop and drop, right? The weekly deviation. And in our prediction videos and everything current, we were looking for 430, right? And uh, we went over some scenarios here that if the market could push back up to those 430 levels, we could shy it and potentially head back down if it didn't want to blow the top off, right? And we don't have any catalyst for blowing the top off, nor news, nor worldly anything. So uh, that's not going to be one of the things that we had easily looked for. So we had pushed up again to that weekly plus one, and we went over a lot of little hints there about that weekly deviation plus one, where not a lot of a uh, uh, speed and traction gets through that. So uh, we swapped to the short buys yesterday. We said 428, and then we had the algos that we were watching very close in my group right here, 428.50. So between those two points of interest were the directional confirmations, right? So if we come into here on the five minute chart, let's take a peek at all of our indicators. And right off the bat, you see some very hot RSI uh, topping action on a higher high pushing up into the 430 shy, right? Because that's up here. It didn't quite make it, hit that weekly yellow deviation, and then continued to pull back down. And before I left my team, we were right around here, about 10, and I said, watch for the push back to 428, short the 428 push, come back down to the golden pocket, which I use right here, 50 fib, 38, here's your golden pocket tag. So that was the um, short call. Now, of course, it, it trickled a little bit later into the after hours here, right? So we got another little trickle back down, and that hit the real extension of the golden pocket, the 3820, my favorite and always so fun pocket right here. So again, this is that 50, that's 3820. That is from the gap up candle, right? That's how we fib them out here, the magic. So right now we had a little bit of a pop back up. Of course, nothing can go in a straight line. We got a extreme tag of the 3820 here, right at open, higher load, push back to the 7860. Pretty common data. Now we are choosing our golden mega over under level for 2684 again for uh, some rally. Now, jobs are soft again. I think unemployment was pretty high. Actual was 265K, uh, expected 235. So more additional jobs claims going up. Um, and of course, you know what that means, soft. So once we have a outlook on the level today, we can continue with this uh, prediction. So uh, yesterday's short prediction was great. Uh, over under the 430, 430 area missed by mere points. Again, you always want to start getting those profit takes before the actual level tag, uh, as that's been happening uh, for quite some time, uh, where it shies a level and doesn't really give us a perfect tag. And that's what the market loves to do. It's not going to give you that perfect tag every single time. So that's why you take profit during your positional turn. Now, back to the 3030 here. This was the secondary short uh, I'd called yesterday where usually our moving average system will bank into the 100 EMA, right? We've covered this one already. Push back to the 50 SMA. So held support for two 30 minute candles on the 100 EMA, popped to the 50 and I said it'll chase down the 200 SMA. So that was our other target for your short yesterday. So we're gonna chase that down under the break of the moving averages. So started here, broke through, held the 100, hit the 50, broke through the 100, right to the next strongest moving average. So that one played out very well with price levels as well. And we got that target uh, there. Now moving into today and what we expect, now we're floating just near this little um, golden level. We're pretty much right on. It's a very, very big over under at 426.84. Now the 200 moving average is pointed straight up. The 50 is coming back down for that bearish cross. And we've seen this before, right? We just had a, a similar um, push like this where we had the big rally, the 200 caught back up and then uh, ended up doing a reverse squeeze. And that day was right here. So you notice a few trade days back before the big gap up, it had this FOMO MOMO where the 50 had crossed through the 100, right? You can see it's all downside. It had a friggin' huge um, manipulation rally up, and that was the end of the week Friday, right? But it did hit our exquisitely placed 100 uh, Fibonacci there on the weekly. So that's a very mega support. But um, noticeably, that 200 SMA was pointing up, the 50 came through the 100, and then all of a sudden it just squeezed straight up in a force up. Now, it's a Thursday with a little bit of jobs catalyst and not much else going into Powell next week. So I'm not really leaning on the next big squeeze yet. I still leaned short uh, by the end of the day. Um, 
last trade day and then today uh, we're still going to watch for confirmation direction at level so we're going to be watching this 426.84 over under utilizing the gap up fibonacci that we how we uh draw these and we said the bonus target if we lose 38.20 uh which is the pocket right here which we'd already hit if we start to get under and stay under the 50 fib which is right here we would have to stay under this box under the 38.20 confirmational on trend and then make it down to that 100 fib right here and back test near the 1618 weekly. So um, if that happens today, that would be a confirmational short or watching trend under 426.84. If the jobs data and the softness wants to push back up and again, attempt more of a melt up as we have been just consolidating with a couple little fresh lows, but also fresh highs and consolidation. So if you're looking at the gap up candle force up, we've had high ticks, high, higher high, came back down for a little bit of a lower low through the pre-market, and we're still kind of fluffing around here what it wants to do. Either way, it's a good sideways consolidation. So if this does not want to fall and it gets back over 426.84 and it starts pushing heavily and it just wants to get static and doesn't want to do too much over the gold level and kind of sit here um, between a lot of that half candle retrace highs and of course our huge levels like the 100 fib, eh, so be it. I'm going to lean a little bit to the short side still. And that's because of our friend Vix here, right? Just probability wise, the volatility index is hanging out, right? Just hanging out. This is the unfilled gap from yesterday. You could take this one off. And we had a really good play out of the gate for that. Oh, something that I forgot to cover here real fast. Going back to yesterday, just seen it on my notepad down here. Um, something to keep in mind with our indicators, uh, as I wanted to go over here, this is the five day, five minute on that push right here out of yesterday's gate and why we swapped short right here under the algo in 428. So we had this little channel. That's the highlighter. Oops. There we go. Um, is the channel break and trend. Okay. So TTM gave you a no wave push squeeze. The RSI was lower high right here from this high. That is, is very hot, but it's still not as hot as it was prior. So lower high. And then it broke down into the channel. So when something breaks down into the bottom of the channel, it goes over cool and it is now stuck in the lower 50 channel of that RSI. This is something we look forward to retest those RSI points of interest. So when it comes down to over cool, pushes to the 50, reject short, pushes to the 50, reject short, pushes a little bit over the 50. Okay, well then it just planes out. But every one of those 50 tags on the RSI here on the five minute and the Mac, which was crossed at the zero, and this is negative territory on the bottom, same thing, bottom 50% channel, right down here, we do have that also swapped and then up lows, up lows, lows. So three different lows. Then we had a hard cross, got over the waves and then pushed back up here just a little bit. But regardless, it told you right here, the trend swap right after the push and big fail pop. That's why I said again, short 428, which was the call yesterday down to the 3820 basket here. And that worked out, but it's a lot of it had that RSI confirmation in the lower channel. TTM, not the biggest help, but we did have two indicators. So if we didn't have TTM, we had one and two on the Mac and the RSI working for us. So still with price action, moving average crosses, weekly deviation resistance, we could come up with enough lower bearish catalyst to assume the trend, trend change to that downside. Now, when we move into the rest here, we talked about VIX, we talked about what we're at. So I'm still leaned a little bit to that. Um, Short side, I should say a little bit, most, most likely short side, just for the relax until something else comes out. So if we get a couple more inside, very boring days, and potentially now back towards the final target, which is these 424 areas here for Friday, and that's if we pull back, you know, again, I don't think it's going to go test the gap in some kind of malicious way unless we get some kind of awkward news piece that hits. But somewhere down to the 424.50s area uh, would not be uh, a bad box. So we have a bunch of different Fibonacci crossovers here. We have Anchor View apps here. And the VIX uh, has room to head back up, right? So as long as we stay uh, consistent on that and start walking itself down, we can get a nice little rollover. Now we have, still have buyer beats here um, in the system. The one minute's barely rolling over on deviation. Other, we got a bunch of moving average traffic jams right now. So we got some time to sit and think uh, for a little bit and hope this gold level chops one way or the other for some good confirmation uh, on some price levels. But besides that, uh, we have that going on. Plus we have um, the volatility and the dollar. So if we go, oh, I can just do the big chart. If we go back down to the big chart here on the dollar, you notice the dollar is fleeting as well, having a really big hard pull against deviation minus two. And then the bonds and TNX went flying here um, on the 10 year treasury as well. And we're at resistance for that. So um, that's kind of a coin flip. So we're really dependent on that VIX. We're going to see where that VIX opens up. 
after she closes at 8.15 and then 15 minute break and see where it is. But over the 14, 19 level heading back up, we could go test some of those. And you notice that VIX has just been low flying, low trending, just not doing too much uh, of anything, right? So until that comes to, to uh, fruitation here, that's just gonna be one of the trades to watch. And that is pretty much it. So right now I'm lean to the short side. We're gonna come all the way back down to potential. Oh, and the last thing, our target, remember, of the shorts, um, when the Fibonacci fails, right? So we're talking the Friday jobs data right here. This is our intraday Fib that we had used for those 261 targets. Once we stayed under the 2618, where do we go? Answer is always the 1618 that we bounce. Here's the 1618. And we finally got that target, of course, right at the end, 7 p.m. close and then into the pre-market. But this is the tag right here. So once it loses the 2618 here, it goes to the 1618 here on Fibonacci retracement. And we got that and she popped back up. Now, if it loses the 1618, obviously 100 Fib, 42450 area, and we'll have to see. And that's fine. We have a big old consolidation garbage week until Powell, until the big news, because everything else they are just assuming is either priced in or it doesn't matter as much. So stay tuned for the next video. We'll see how today plays out at our gold level over under 426.84. And we'll recap that.